Hey everyone, this is Karan Balaji and uh, I'm the UX engineer of Exam Pro. Today is June 22nd, uh, 2019. A little bit about me is I'm a massive uh, gamer. I used to play a lot of competitive games and I love to dance and also I love to A-B test. So this tech talk is designed to help you study for the associates of AWS certification. And what are we building here is that uh, we are making uh, a, B, a, a prototype A and prototype B and we are making two different taglines and we want to see what works best for the user and it's going to be the results are going to be what it what what works and that's all A-B testing is all about and uh, what was the goal and limitation so we wanted to utilize 100% of AWS uh, for the implementation and tracking of A-B testing solution why because our entire infrastructure and application is on AWS and we want to perform A-B testing within a single S3 bucket utilizing an S3 static website hosting because Google did not have an answer where we had a single S3 bucket and I'm going to show you how we did that and it's going to be a pioneer project and now let's like let's take a look at four ways of doing A/B testing. So the first way is through using Route 53. Over here, the user re requests Route 53, and over here, the key mechanism is using weighted route policy, where we split the traffic 50 50 percent, where 50 percent goes to A, and then goes to an application load balancer, and goes to multiple EC2 ins instances, and it's the similar thing for the other one, 50 percent to traffic B. And uh, the next one is uh, we're going to use API Gateway and uh, Lambda. Over here, the mechanism is to do Lambda is the mechanism. And uh, over here, the Lambda is attached to the API Gateway for which it goes through an application load balance and splits the traffic, uh, which is sent to container A and container B. And the third one is we're going to use uh, application load balancer and over here the key mechanism is request routing query strings where we're going to attach test A and test B by which it goes to target A and target B. And the final one is the, uh, we're going to use CloudFront and Lambda Edge and this is what we use at Exam Pro to do the A-B testing and uh, over here the Lambda Edge is the key mechanism to do A-B testing and uh, we use four Lambda Edges for different purposes which I'm going to walk you through where it will access uh, the users for you know prototype A and prototype B uh, for it. So here, yeah. so CloudFront uh, is a content distribution network. It creates cached copies of your website at various edge locations around the world for super fast loading. What it means is that so our website is in Canada and if somebody is accessing from India and uh, if your neighbor has already accessed our website and uh, it, it just loads from your neighbor really quick because he's already accessed instead of loading it from Canada. So that's what Content Distribution Network does. So its purpose is to get the content from the nearest uh, location or nearest the nearest person. So, uh, so what is the origin in CloudFront? So an origin is like an address which tells the CloudFront where, where to fetch content from. So origins can point to different things such as EC2 instance, elastic load balancers, S3 buckets, or in our case, a specific folder in, in spe a specific S3 bucket. So remember I told you that we're going to use just one S3 and where we're going to you know, split two folders and put two of those prototypes in the single S3 bucket. And we're going to attach the origin address to A and you know, B and that's how it works in CloudFront and and moreover we come to lambda edge functions so we use lambda edge functions to override the behavior of request and responses so there are four available lambda edge functions for so far our, pers our purpose we only use three of them which is viewer request origin request origin response and viewer response so i'm going to walk you through how the user does the viewer request and then it goes through the origin request and then it comes back to the origin response. So the viewer request is what when the user requests for the website. So what it does is this Lambda function uh, randomizes which origin we should choose. So it first checks whether is there a cookie with the X source and if there's no cookie, it randomizes between A or B. So if the cookie carried already from the user which had like A or B, since he doesn't have, is a new user. So it's gonna randomize a cookie between A and B and set the X source cookie with a random value, which could be A and B. So 
you cannot change the origin and the certain headers in the viewer request or else you would shoot up a 502 error which we came across and we fixed it and the next re request is the origin request where we change changes the origin we should serve so what it does is it checks the it checks if there's a cookie with the x source and uh, is there an x source of value a or b so its purpose is to check whether it already has a value a or b or with the cookie and the third one is what we actually want to do as our goal is like to console log which page was shown for tracking so we want to know which page is shown for the person who's uh, uh, requesting for the origin and then it changes the origin path to be a or b depending on what was there in the cookie and uh, then the origin response is what it does it it sets the cookies so future requests from the same user results in the same page so it grabs the current x x source so it sets the cookie for the user so the future request will yield the same source so what is the future the goal is for that if uh, somebody somebody access the website and he refreshes it so he should be able to see only a because he accessed A first and he should be only be able to see A for a while so that we track him whether he's doing good. So if he refreshes and gets another another version, so it doesn't work that way. So that's the purpose for the origin response. And uh, how do we actually track? That's the end goal, right? We want to know whether A worked well or B worked well. So we here we use CloudWatch logs and metrics and dashboards, which is a part of AWS. And we create two metric filters, one for A and one for B. And then use these metrics in CloudWatch to build the dashboard. So let's have a look at it again. So how it goes from the user's perspective, user centric. So user access, user uses the phone or computer request or marketing web, web page. And the viewer requests uh, handles the logics to roll a die to determine whether A or B should be served. And then the, it pushes to the origin request and uh, the origin request changes the origin, what origin should be served, whether it's A or B. And then once it goes, uh, once the user gets A, for example, so he come, uh, so the origin response comes back and sets the cookie, oh, this, oh, this user accessed A, so that from the future, this same user comes and tries to access, he's going to only see A. So that's how overall it's going to be. And uh, yep. So we also built this open source UI kit. If you really like the way we showcased our diagrams, you can always use it. And we are always updating this UI kit. And you can also get all these templates from inside where you type UX and uh, you just get all of those UX resources and templates. And we're going to continuously add more content. And uh, thank you.